Welcome back, Fantasy Fiction Fanatics. It's great to see you again, and I hope you're doing well. Today's class is going to be another character analysis, and the character from this time is going to be Sirius Black from the Harry Potter series. But before we jump in, let's go ahead and cover our trivia question, see who got it right and what the answer was. So the correct answer was a skull for this week, and I had three correct participants. Christian, Chicago style pizza is really just dot dot dot. Paul and Dan. So congratulations to the three of you for getting it right. Thank you so very much to the three of you and to everyone else who participated and gave it their best shot. I love playing with you guys and it really makes me happy to see your answers and see who gets the question right. Um, if you are new and would like to jump in to doing the question, go ahead over to fantasyfictionfanatics.net. It will be for desktop on the right hand side. You will have to scroll down just a tiny little bit to see the question and you are able to answer it there. If you're on mobile, you will have to scroll almost all the way down to the bottom. It'll be pretty close to the bottom of the page down there and you'll be able to answer it as well. Um, yeah, so thanks again to everyone who participated. I really enjoy it, um, and hopefully you guys are enjoying the question as well. Okay, now that that's up, let's go ahead and jump right into our analysis of Sirius Black. And we'll start, as always, with just a basic profile of who this character is. And he is, like I mentioned, a character from the Harry Potter series. He is Harry's godfather, and... Harry's dad's best friend, at least when Harry's dad was alive, of course. And he is also a wanted prisoner from the Azkaban prison. So pretty simple character. Um, he is someone who is in book, uh, starting from book three, so not from the very beginning, but comes in a little bit later in the series and lasts through book five. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in with his traits and who he presents himself to be, the kind of person he presents himself to be. Um, he is a very smart person. He's also very caring and very loyal. Those often go together. Um, he is a very understanding person. He's not someone that is very judgmental or uh, makes snap decisions or is un, you know, doesn't listen or something like that. He's very understanding and uh, very much someone who will listen and um, give advice, that kind of stuff. Um, he is very, very wise. Um, he's had some stuff happen to him, as we will talk about, which has made him learn more about the world and about things. And he is very grateful. Um, he's someone who's definitely had a rough life, and so he has definitely become a very grateful person. Okay, so those are the main traits that I saw that Sirius really embodies. Um, I know it's a little bit less than I usually come up with, but I felt like this was really the core of his being. Um, if I've missed anything or you want to put in your own opinion or if you think I'm wrong in any way, of course, let me know down below or anywhere else you'd like to reach me and let me know. I'd love to have a discussion with you on what you think about Sirius Black and who he is as a person and the traits that he portrays himself to have. Okay, and let's move right along into his role in the story. So what is the reason that he is here? The first one is that he is a loyalist. So his role very much embodies a typical loyalist character and we've talked about several of them already on this channel. Um, and he has always been loyal to the Potters. Um, he's been very loyal to Harry since he came into Harry's life and he's very, very loyal to the Order of the Phoenix. So he is 100% loyal once he has chosen a side. Um, and of course the side has always been for him, Harry, the Potters, and the Order. Um, at first he is thought to have been a betrayer and to, he's originally um, brought into the story with the mindset that he is a betrayer and that he had actually sold out the Potters to Voldemort. And the case, is that really he was 100% loyal 100% of the time and was merely framed to have been a betrayer. Instead, he is 100% loyal. He is not the murderer that everybody 
thought that he was based on the evidence that was presented and what he was been locked up for. Um, he is very, very loyal, very much of a solid character who will have your back when you need it. He is also the mentor slash parent in this series. Um, and this, in the case of this particular one, is specifically for Harry. Um, he fills the role, instead of his parents, of being the mentor, of being the parent. Um, Dumbledore is also very much a mentor type of person for Harry, but Sirius is more of the parent side of the mentor um, kind of classification because he fills in where his parents could not. He does give advice to Harry when Harry asks. He helps Harry when he's struggling with certain emotions and will have conversations with him, try to interact with him and try to help him through his struggles, try and give him advice when needed. Um, even in um, Order of the Phoenix, he calls upon Sirius a couple times to explain what's going on and to get his opinion on it. So. Sirius really is like a parent or a mentor for him, and he is constantly there when Harry needs him. Harry just has to ask, and he's there. And of course, originally, Sirius was hoping that he would be cleared of all his charges and be able to take over custody of Harry, and that unfortunately fell through, um, and he has to be in hiding instead. But even with the hiding, even with the stress of being discovered and possibly being sent back to prison, Sirius is 100% of the time there to help Harry and to provide that parent connection that he has not previously had because of his parents being gone and the Dursleys being so miserable to him and being such terrible people to him. So Sirius is really, really important both as being a loyalist and as being that mentor and parenting role that Harry needs and has not had at this uh, until the point that Sirius comes into his life. Now what does Sirius bring to the story? So we understand what his role in the story was um, and what he was providing that way, but what does he actually bring to the story with the roles that he's been put in? Well the first thing is he provides a family for Harry. So until the point that Sirius shows up in the series, Harry has no real family. I mean, he has the Dursleys, but the Dursleys are the Dursleys. They're terrible people, and nobody really wants them to be family. Let's get real. Um, and he has, obviously, Ron's family, and Ron's family does really accept him and love him and treat him like a family, but he doesn't have a family that's his own until Sirius shows up. So Sirius finds uh, or fills in this place in Harry's life and gives him a family that loves him that cares about him, that wants him with him. Um, he's constantly trying to, you know, provide the family things that he can to Harry. He wanted to actually take Harry and have them be a family and live together and to support him if he had been able to become released from Azkaban officially instead of being an escaped prisoner. So he fills in this very important essential spot that was missing for Harry. It gives Harry somebody to love and to care about and to know that he is not alone in this world. And though he really wasn't alone, and he did have his friends, and he does have, like I said, Ron's family and such like that, for Harry actually having family that is his, that he can claim since he doesn't have parents, is very important to him. And Sirius filled in that role and provided that for him while the time that he had with Sirius. So very, very important role of that one, or what he brings to the story and brings to Harry, of course, is very important to Harry and to the decisions that he makes through the books that Sirius is alive and with him. The second one is a very simple concept, is he brings a link to Harry's parents. So before they knew about Harry, obviously the teachers know, or sorry, they knew about Harry's dad and mom. And the teachers obviously knew the parents. Um, and, you know, everybody knows the Potters because, you know, they sacrificed themselves and Harry ended up living through that experience. But it's not like a personal connection. And it's not a personal connection for Harry to know about his parents. It's like he's hearing them, like, 
through third third person kind of um, discussions. It's not really a personal connection, but Sirius um, does provide this very close connection for Harry's dad, especially, and is that link for Harry to his parents. So we've got Harry here who really wants to know about his parents, who really misses being able to know them and has that lack in his life. And then we've got Sirius who was directly related in terms of how close he was to Harry's dad. He grew up with Harry's dad. He was best friends with him. And so there's this link for Harry to his parents through Sirius. And he feels now that he is closer because Sirius is family now. Um, and family that loves him and cares about him and, you know, sign his permission slip and send him gifts. And he is linked to his dad and can tell him specifically firsthand accounts of the kind of person his dad was and what kind of things they did together, their school days together, all that kind of stuff. So there is a very personal link then for Harry to have to his dad and through his dad to his mom. And third... Thing that he brings to this story is hope. Again, this is in relationship to Harry, but Sirius, I feel like, really is a connection to hope for Harry. A hope that there is more than just the Dursleys, that there is more to his life and more out there waiting for him than just the miserable constant constancy of the Dursleys, of you know, only having happiness while he's at school. Uh, hope that you know not everything is just bleak and horrible and that you know who is the only connection that he has to everybody else is that you know this famous the boy who lived title that Sirius is hope for Harry and his future to have something to have family to be loved to have something that's going to be more than what he's got now so Sirius I feel like is very much a hope-filled person. It, it fills Harry with hope. Let's put it that way, since that actually makes much more sense. Um, so yeah, it's the, the hope that he can escape the Dursleys, he can have a family with someone, he will have somebody there to look after him who will care about him, who will want to know about what's going on in his life and his schooling and all that. So he gives Harry a family, he gives Harry a link to his parents, and he gives Harry hope for the future, that there is more waiting for him than just what he's got at this point that is not really that great, other than school and his friends, because of course his school and his friends are good to him, but Sirius is really the hope for a family and to have a bright future. So I'd love to know what you think about uh, Sirius's role in the story as well as what he brings to the story if I've missed anything or if you think that I am a way off kilter or if you just think I've missed something want to expand upon it want me to explain a little bit more anything and anything comments questions concerns anything at all let me know I'd love to have a discussion like I said before about it so please let me know your thoughts on Sirius for these subject matters as well let's go ahead and talk about his goals now over the course of the series, I feel like Sirius has two main goals. The first one is to catch Peter Pettigrew. The first book, the reason that he wanted to catch Peter Pettigrew was because they had killed, or he had told Voldemort where uh, the Potter's safe house was and ended up being the reason that they died. So that is the first motivation for this goal is to catch him is because he is so angry about the betrayal that Peter has um, done to the Potters. So he literally escapes Azkaban just to try and catch Peter and to murder him in turn, like for real, um, because he betrayed the Potters and his best friend was killed because of it. Now, that goal remains the same even though it transforms from that motivation to the motivation of being a uh, no longer needing to be an escaped convict and he can have then a free life so at the end of book three everyone's on his side as they understand he is an innocent person who was framed for um 
the, the Potter's murder as well as Peter's murder and murdering a whole bunch of people when really it was Peter who did that. So he's locked away. And the only way that they can show evidence that he was not the person who killed Peter and all those people is by showing them that Peter exists and that he's actually alive and not killed. So he wants to find Peter and catch Peter in order to no longer be an escaped convict and can have a life with Harry and everybody else and actually have a normal life. Unfortunately, that goal is never reached for him, but that is a goal nonetheless. Second goal is to support Harry and the Order to stop Voldemort. He has always been 100% against Voldemort, 100% on the side of the Potters, and he is then back in the Order when it, uh, the Order of the Phoenix, when it is um, formed, and everyone is trying to figure out how to stop Voldemort. He gives them the use of his place, which is hidden, and is very much involved in the plans for defeating Voldemort. So. His goal in the end is to help out defeating Voldemort and to be 100% on that side. So he's got those two goals throughout his time in the series. He is a vital person to helping um, defeat Voldemort even though he does die before that happens. So in that way, he does fulfill that goal because what he wants to do is to help with that. But unfortunately, he was never cleared of the crime that he was supposed to have committed and was not able to have that life that he was helping with Harry, which is unfortunate. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to relationships. I feel like there are three main relationships that are very important to Sirius and his character. The first is James Potter. Now, this seems kind of probably obvious because he was his best friend growing up and he was someone who was very loyal to him 100%. So, of course, James was a big portion of Sirius's life. He is, uh, Sirius truly loved James very, very much um, and it helped him grow up to be the person that he is today for multiple reasons. One, because you know your friends and your actions and things that you're doing when you're younger do help define who you are as an adult. So James was a big uh, person in his life growing up and did help him become who he is today. But also as a second is because James is also the reason that he is placed in Azkaban because the murder or the betrayal was put on to Sirius by Peter, he is locked up into Azkaban. And so that relationship with James really hit hit him as a person and, and hit him uh, hard when he is then sent to Azkaban for it. Um, so he feels very much like he failed Lily and James because he was the one that said for Peter to be the person that kept the safe house secret. So James is very, very important to Sirius as his past and for his present. Um, everything that he does now is because he feels that he has betrayed his best friend and failed him, failed to keep him safe. So his past is defined by him and his presence is defined by him, even though James is no longer around. Very, very important relationship to him. The second one is Lupin. Because of the friend group, Lupin is the one that is still left, um, who hasn't betrayed him and is still close to him. So Lupin is very, very important. And he was important in his past because the uh, relationship that he had with Lupin was what made him become an animagus in the first place. So the whole reason that part, well, not the whole reason, but part of the reason that he is the way he is today is because of Lupin. So he has James to thank and Lupin to thank for his past and for him growing up to being the person that he is today. It is also important for Lupin because Lupin, once he saw Peter Pettigrew on that map, completely believed and trusted Sirius, gave him a chance to prove his innocence and to show that Peter was alive. 100% on his side, the second he realized that there was evidence that showed that Sirius was not a murderer. 
So Lupin is very, very important for Sirius, not only because he was a friend, not only because he still is a friend, um, but because he also gives him a chance to show who he is and the truth of the matter behind everything. So it's a very important relationship that Sirius has with Lupin as well. Lupin obviously loved him enough to trust him and say, hey, I've seen that the evidence is on your side. Please prove to me and everybody else that what you're saying is the truth. And last but not least, his relationship with Harry is a very important relationship. He truly, truly loves Harry. And as he feels that he failed James and failed his best friend and his best friend's wife, he will risk his life and does risk his life for Harry to try and not do the same thing again. He risks life and limb for Harry and ends up dying because he risks his life for Harry. Not that I feel that he has any regrets on that at all. I don't believe that he would have, if, if you know, if you were talking to his ghost afterward, he would have any regrets. Um, so he goes there to protect Harry but like he could not protect James. So they have a very strong connection. He feels very much uh, his godfather duties to Harry really connects with him, is his mentor, is somebody who loves and cares about him and wants to be a family with him. So Harry is a very important person in his life. <sighs> okay, last but not least, I wanted to talk about Azkaban. So Azkaban is not a pleasant place <laughs> and we have a little bit of that knowledge before we even meet Sirius in book two where Haggard gets sent there and spends a little bit of time there because they thought that he opened the Chamber of Secrets and was in charge of setting the monster on people. But that ends up not being the case for Haggard and he comes back and talks about how terrible just spending that small amount of time in Azkaban was. Well, Sirius spends 12 years in Azkaban. 12 years being fed on by Dementors, 12 years being malnourished and hardly fed, 12 years of suffering and disparity and just depression because that is what Dementors leave in their wake, um, being locked up with you know, all the other Death Eaters and um, horrible people that are in there. Just 12 years of just pain and suffering and horribleness. And I think that that is very impactful for a person to have experienced that. And that is partly why Sirius is the way he is now, the way that he is not quite the rambunctious, charismatic person he was as a teenager who was best friends with James. He is not someone who just leaps into the middle of things. He thinks things through. He's very much a calm, collected person because he has been changed by the fact that he's been, you know, had all this happiness sucked out of him. All those happy memories are, are drained out. His, you know, malnourishment means he knows what it's like to go hungry and to be so skinny and to just be on the verge of death and misery. And, you know, he ends up fighting through it enough to escape but he escapes by becoming his dog form and being able to slide through the bars. That means he was very, very skinny and very, very weak. So that really affects a person and that really takes out probably a lot of the joy from his life, which gives more meaning to the joy that he has with Lupin and with Harry and Harry's friends and all the other people that he interacts with. But it also does show that he really has changed from when he was a teenager doing you know, his pranks and getting into trouble and mischief and running around. And though he can relate to that and he has the fond memories of doing that, he's no longer the person that is like that. He's much more cautious, much more calm, much more grateful because he's just grateful to not be stuck in that place anymore. Um, and he still keeps the strong qualities of being loyal and caring, but that time in that prison did really do a number on him and his mentality. So, yeah, I guess that is all I really have to say today on Sirius Black. Um, I feel like because he's a secondary character, he's got quite a bit of time in the story, and that gives him um, a lot of 
time for us as a reader to you know like him and to care about him and for Harry to make a connection with him but he's not one of those characters that's like you know up at the forefront so he is a little bit more on the back side which makes it so he's not quite so um full and complex as maybe you know Harry or Hermione is who is at the very front and is in most scenes and then such as that so let me know if I missed anything however I feel like I covered a lot about him but please let me know if I missed anything important or if you disagree or anything else any comments questions or concerns like I said I would love to have a discussion with you and I really am interested to see what your thoughts on Sirius is how much you like him how much you wish he was one way or another way whatever you'd like to say I would love to hear it and have a discussion with you so if doing a comment down below is not the best way to reach me, then you're also welcome to reach me on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash fantasyfiction1. You're also welcome to reach me at Twitter, which is at fantasyfiction1. You're also welcome to join me and a bunch of your other fellow fantasy fanatics on the Discord. We've got over 30 people over there on the Discord chatting, having a good time, and um, fairly active. Um, if you'd like to join, the link is down below. We would love to have you there discussing things with us as well. And you're welcome to share your thoughts on Sirius Black over there where we can discuss it together. If you want more content from me, you are welcome to check out the blog at fantasyfictionfanatics.net. I've got tons of different content over there, different kinds of things that I provide here on the channel, like uh, written up book reviews, book suggestions, fanatic deliberations, where I just talk about different things about writing and fantasy and my thoughts on them. Um, lots of different kind of things over there, a little bit more personal stuff in there as well. Don't forget if you go over there to join the newsletter, if you want monthly updates from me on what's going on, some personal things and some behind the scenes of me making videos on there as well. So if that's interesting for you, you are welcome to join the newsletter over on the blog as well. Whew. All right, I guess that is it for today and I will see you in the next class. Bye.